Powered by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. President Trump praises his embattled Supreme Court nominee. I'm John Schuma with the president's words of support and when we might hear from the woman who accuses Judge Kavanaugh of sexual assault. And a man arrested for trespassing on dangerous thermal areas in Yellowstone National Park is now under arrest again, this time in Cheyenne, Wyoming, coming up the new charges that he's facing. Good morning to you. It is 6.30 on your Friday. I'm Missy O'Malley. And our top story for you, the college professor who says she was sexually assaulted by Brett Kavanaugh when they were teenagers is now willing to testify before the Senate Judiciary Committee, but only if certain conditions are met. Last night, President Trump put full weight of his support behind his Supreme Court nominee. CBS's John Schumo has our latest from New York. President Trump heaped praise upon his embattled Supreme Court nominee at a rally in Las Vegas last night. Brett Kavanaugh is one of the finest human beings you will ever have the privilege of knowing or meeting. Brett Kavanaugh's confirmation to the Supreme Court has been delayed as the Senate deals with accusations by Christine Blasey Ford, who says he sexually assaulted her when they were in high school. Kavanaugh denies her allegation. So we got to let it play out, but I want to tell you, he is a fine, fine person. Before the speech, the president told Fox News' Sean Hannity, the Senate needs to move forward. Why didn't somebody call the FBI 36 years ago? I mean, you could also say, when did this all happen? What's going on? With coming before our committee. The White House and Republicans have denied requests by Ford's attorneys for an FBI investigation and have pushed forward with a Monday hearing for Ford and Kavanaugh. This is a fast track. They are totally intent on getting Judge Kavanaugh onto the Supreme Court, come hell or high water. Democratic Senators Maisie Hirono and Kirsten Gillibrand say the GOP is bullying Ford. Who is not asking the FBI to investigate these claims? The White House. Ford's attorney says she's willing to testify but wants to do so later in the week. Kavanaugh told the committee he'll be there Monday and wants to clear his name. John Schumo, CBS News. Now, there are reports that Ford would like to testify on Thursday, separate from Kavanaugh. It is unclear if that request will be honored. The Senate Judiciary Committee had given Ford until 8 a.m. today to confirm if she would show up on Monday. There's also security concerns Ford wants addressed. Ford and Kavanaugh and their families have all received death threats. It's getting very heated. We yeah. will continue to this follow the story, and CBS has more on that this morning as well. Matt looks like a pretty nice weekend ahead. Uh, not too bad. I think yeah. this morning um, there's yeah. a few gardens that may be a little in jeopardy. Yeah. Uh, temperatures <laughs> right around the freezing mark for much of southwest Montana. We're sitting at 34 in Belgrade. It really depends on where you are. Uh, not everybody dealing with frost, but certainly those clear skies keeping the temperatures cool this morning. Temperatures should bounce back into the 70s this afternoon. The weekend looks nice, at least initially. We'll talk about our rain chances coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Matt. It's now 6.33 in our top local story for you. A man is under arrest after leading police on a chase through Cheyenne, Wyoming. Turns out it is the same guy who was caught on video last week walking around Old Faithful Geyser. 27-year-old Gabriel Villalva was taken into custody after multiple people reported a car driving recklessly around town. Police stopped him after a chase through town using spike strips. Villalva sat in the car revving the engine which led the vehicle to catch fire. Officers were able to get him out of the car and firefighters quickly put out the vehicle. Now, Vlava was detained by police and then transported to the hospital with minor injuries. That we're trying to investigate to determine how much property damage there was, um, what other charges there may be. All of those things are details that will come in the future, but I just don't have this time. He actually struck a patrol car and uh, also struck a fence along the, uh, the route there. Um, so fortunately, nobody else was injured during this crash or no, no bystanders or citizens were injured during this crash. No officers were injured. Now, Cheyenne police have not released why he was running from officers and if any charges have now been filed.
And a domestic violence sh shelter in Butte gets a big financial boost that will pay for legal services for its clients. The Safe Place Shelter received nearly $500,000 with a grant from U.S. Department of Justice Office on Violence Against Women. The money will pay for a local attorney to provide legal services for its client over the next three years. Shelter officials say victims of sexual assault and domestic violence often do not have resources for legal help. If they're fleeing domestic violence or sexual assault, they've probably left behind any financial resources they have. They can't afford an attorney. So this, with this grant, it will make it possible for us to be able to send them to an attorney who specializes in domestic violence or sexual assault. Now along with Silver Bow County, the shelter serves people from Deer Lodge, Granite, Jefferson, and Powell counties as well. And a proposed logging project to fulfill state requirements is receiving a pushback from the Bozeman Environmental Group. MTN's Mallory Peebles spoke with the state and the opposition. The trees on this mountain are owned by the state through a trust intended to fund schools, K-12, through and higher education, plus public buildings. But to fund those things, it means the trees have to come down. We can't cut more than 56 million board feet, and we have to cut 56 million board feet. And those come from where the, the trees are in rotation and where it's appropriate to cut them. The Department of Natural Resources and Conservation says the lifespan of lodgepole pine is about 120 years, and many of those trees are older, at risk of dying, especially if they've been attacked by beetles. But not everyone sees the proposal to cut down the trees as a good option. We are not an anti-logging group. We are not opposed to all of the activities that the DNRC does. We just feel in this particular situation, the public would be better served if the area were left as it is. Residents of this area and from around Bozeman created the group called Save Our Gallatin Front. They feel beauty will be lost and wildlife impacted. I mean, it just doesn't seem like a, an equitable sort of financial um, underpinnings to, to destroy that type of wildlife habitat for only $130,000. The state says that money offsets the state's need to dip into Montanans' pockets through taxes. We have to manage our land so that it meets the obligations to the trust. That's what it's here for. The state says it is listening to people. The public is invited to give testimony next Monday evening on the three proposals. Reporting from Bozeman, I'm Mallory Peebles with MTN News. Mallory tells us there are three proposals for the project. Two include logging and one is to defer any logging for 10 years. Opponents don't like any of those options because they want to see a longer deferment. For details about the meeting, visit our website. And a dinner was held in Bozeman on Wednesday night and it drew attention for those with special needs. The dinner on disabilities with legislative candidates was put on by the ARC Montana and Bozeman Special Education Parent Teacher Association. It was held at Eagle Mount with over 80 people attending. About a dozen legislative candidates attended. Organizers say important topics discussed were lengthy wait lists for those seeking essential services provided through Medicaid waivers and the need for extending special education courses for those ages 18 to 21. So we're a huge constituent group, and I think they were really glad to hear from us. I think it opened their eyes. We definitely heard from some of them afterwards that they didn't know these things and that now they're going in with information and a place to start from. And organizers say they do plan to hold more events like this around the state. And more health news that will likely interest parents of student athletes. This season, small fry football in Helena is increasing safety measures in an effort to lower head injuries in young players. Now there's even a new addition for uniforms for every league player, what's called a guardian cap. Small Fry partnered with St. Peter's Health to get those caps, which are protective soft-shelled padding that players attach to their helmets. The caps are designed to absorb up to 33% of impact from a collision. Certainly, the more that we can limit any kind of brain injury, the better off they're going to be down the road. Definitely, we have concerns with repeat injuries because that can just cause a lot of long-term effects down the road as well. Um, you know, and it causes delays in school. Now, more than 400 small fry players have received those guardian caps, which cost about 35 bucks a piece. And since National Concussion Awareness Day is Friday, physical therapists at St. Peter's are also encouraging parents to learn more about concussions and their symptoms. Few signs that doctors say to look out for in student athletes, loss of consciousness, headaches, or personality changes.
And crews from Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks and Bozeman Police Department spent some time on Thursday rem morning removing a bear from a local home. The 25 year old female black bear was found taking a nap in the homeowner's garage. It appears she got into the neighbor's honey beehives before lying down to take a little rest. Homeowners tried to wake her up and scare her away but she was very content on sleeping against their garage door. She was then tranquilized and released back into the wild. Now this is a great reminder to be bear aware, even if you live downtown. That is a wild story. Stay with us in just a moment. We take you to upstate New York where a factory has a vision. Blind workers with precision sewing and stitching is making headlines. But first, we're gonna check out the headlines coming up at seven here on CBS. Good morning ahead on CBS this morning. The woman accusing Brett Kavanaugh of sexual assault says she's prepared to testify next week, but only if senators meet certain requests. New York Times reporter Jody Cantor, whose investigations fueled the Me Too movement, is here with the significance of speaking out. And only on CBS this morning, the father of an accused Russian spy tells us why he believes the charges against his daughter, Maria Butina, are not true. All that and more, we'll see you at 7.